Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about breakout trading and how traders trade breakouts. Now, markets go from ranging to trending to ranging. So, um, you know, you'll get a range, uh, sorry, a trending market, and then prices will end up going sideways for a bit, a bit directionless, and then you might either get a trend continuation to the upside, and then a ranging market of some sort, and then maybe to the downside and so on and so forth. Um, so if markets go from trending to ranging to trending, what breakout traders will look to anticipate is um, really a major break of a level of support or resistance. Now that level of support and resistance can be horizontal, it can be dynamic, it can be diagonal. So dynamic being a moving average, diagonal being a trend line. So, you know, after, and that's really after price has been, really been in a directionless market. So what I mean by that is um, one of the, well, one of the popular breakout uh, trading patterns is, would be a horizontal um, breakout. So we'll go over some diagonal ones as well. But in this case, let me draw that line again. In this case, we're going to look at a horizontal one. And we'll look at some diagonal um, breakout patterns uh, in a bit. So you have prices are really contained between a support and resistance level. Now we need at least uh, two touches of a level to really confirm it as a level of support or resistance so when prices are really contained between this area here and this is what we would probably consider this to be maybe like a box or a rectangle type of breakout so traders are wondering where prices are going to go so are they going to go to the upside and continue and maybe you know start a trend to the upside or start a trend to the downside. So if traders um, are anticipating a breakout of a level, then if prices do come down to a level of support, then traders, breakout traders will be on alert. So what they really want to see here is a clear or a, a high probability or high probability that prices may um, break to the downside and their um what they really want to see is a candlestick close on the, their trading time frame so if this is a bearish candle this would be the open and this would be the close so what they want to see is price and the candlestick close beyond or below the level of support and that would tell them that prices have a decent chance of continuing um, to the downside and potentially they can be jumping on the beginnings of a downtrend after we've been in a ranging markets and the same thing would apply to the upside so if prices was to come up to here breakout traders would be looking for a candlestick close above the resistance level so this would be the open and that would be the close of the candle and the close of the candle would indicate some sort of momentum um, or could indicate some sort of momentum to breakout traders and they would then take that as a buying signal that prices are going to enter a trend after it's been in a directionless or ranging type market for a while. So um, this is what we would call again a box or rectangle type of pattern and we're going to look at some examples of how traders trade this type of pattern on the price chart. So here's an example of a breakout type trade. Now um, the market had been moving sideways for a bit, so we had a level here, and we had a high and we had a low, and then prices came up into the um, the resistance zone, 
came down into the support zone creating um you know confirmed support and confirmed resistance because we don't know this is if this is support until the second touch vice versa we don't know this whether that's resistance until the second touch um and then prices if we look at just zoom in slightly so we can see here we had really a directionless market looking at this traders wouldn't have known really what was happening higher highs and higher lows weren't being made if this was the high and this was the low prices just were kind of contained in this range this box this rectangle until we see uh this candle right here so let me uh this candle right here now So you can clearly see that this candle closed above the resistance high. A clear candle closed and then what traders will do is they will um, enter on the close of the candle above the support or resistance level, in this case the resistance level and then put their stop anywhere below the either the candles low so they got a tighter stop or they will put it below the swing which is around here and obviously if we go further up we can see that the risk reward was uh, pretty decent so that's the first way and that's one of the um uh the ways that traders will trade a um a rectangle or a ranging type um breakout strategy now here's an example on the pound dollar um hourly chart where you have a um a ranging market and we have a breakout to the downside so we have a level that had been touched at least twice once and twice and the uh, support level had been touched you know once twice a few times and you can see that with this candle wick here obviously we didn't get a close below and if you're drawing support and resistance support and resistance is never fixed because uh, price um, will always create new and uh, new levels so once if we look at this in real time, if we ignore everything to the right, and if we were going through the charts scrolling in real time, this would have been a resistance zone. There would not have been a breakout trade. Traders would not have got short on this time frame if the candle didn't close below here. And um, that's what you call. Uh, maybe some sort of a false breakout and I'll get into that a bit later as well but if we keep going now that's the new resistance zone from here to here got one two three touches and this is the low so if we draw it all the way across we can now see that prices broke and closed to the downside that would indicate now um, a potential change in the state of the market so rather than going from a directionless ranging market breakout traders once they get that close on their preferred time frame then they would look to get short and as you can see the market you know did go lower so let's look at another type of breakout type uh, pattern. So this uh, breakout trading pattern is what is known as the rising and falling wedge. It's like the wedge pattern, right? So this would be what you would call the rising and this would be what you would call the falling. So the rising wedge, as you can see, you've got you know resistance and support and prices contained um, within this wedge type pattern and the falling is obviously 
um, the opposite direction. Now, um, a rising wedge is making steady higher highs. Right, so you've got steady higher highs, another higher high here. Um, but the uh, higher lows are rising faster and steeper than the higher highs, and it basically creates this, um, this, this, this kind of triangle type pattern, this wedge type pattern, where again, traders are kind of caught between. Um, support and resistance and then at some point traders will either look to trade this wedge pattern to the upside as prices oh so as prices are getting squeezed and slowly squeezed there should be and price um traders look for some sort of uh breakout to the upside or a breakout to the downside and it's the same thing as prices get squeezed in the wedge then traders will trade a break of either the resistance or support levels so let's have a look at the wedge pattern the rising wedge and the falling wedge on a price chart so here we have the rising wedge pattern on the euro canadian dollar 240 chart and we can see here that prices are making steady higher highs but the higher highs are um, not as steep as the higher lows are being made so we can see here we have a high and a low here and you can see the higher lows are at a steeper angle than the um, the higher highs. So prices are steadily being squeezed between the lows and the highs, creating this wedge type pattern. And then what we see is a break. So traders would be looking to enter on either the break above this level or a break below this diagonal support level and as we can see prices broke below the diagonal support level and so on the close of the candle traders would enter put their stop somewhere in a safe location and then trade to the downside and again the same thing would apply to uh, the upside any breaks of diagonal resistance um, with a bullish candle and traders would get into the upside so here we have the falling wedge pattern on the New Zealand Canadian dollar 60 minute pair where we have prices are steadily making lower highs and lower lows but again the key to this is that the lower highs around here the angle is a steeper angle than the lower lows so the lower lows you're making steady ones here and here but it's more of a shallow angle whereas the lower highs are making uh, steeper is making a steeper kind of angle again and prices are being squeezed into a wedge and then prices would either break out to the upside or break to the downside now we can see here in this candle here is our um, breakout candle and this is where traders would look to enter so let's get rid of that and let's zoom in on this candle here Again, so we get a close below our diagonal support level and then traders would put their stop loss in what they deem to be a safe place and then price goes to the downside and the same thing would uh, would apply regarding the upside if prices broke above this uh, diagonal resistance level 
traders wait for a candle close or two candle closes, a clear candle close um, above that level um, to get involved in that trade. So this triangle pattern is called the pennant pattern, spelled P-E-N-N-A-N-T. And it pretty much is where prices get squeezed and prices neither making higher highs or higher lows. Again, it's directionless. So um, you've got a high here and you've got a low here. And this is making a, uh, a lower high. Uh, and this is making a higher low. There's no direction uh, as to where the market may want to go. So price is being squeezed into um, uh, this kind of uh, um, tip of a triangle type pattern and then um, traders are looking for prices to either break to the upside or break to the downside in a trend either continuation if prices have been coming down this way uh, this could be seen as a trend continuation pattern or if prices had been going up and then started creating this uh, pennant pattern then traders could see this as a trend continuation depending on whether it breaks past the um, diagonal uh, resistance or the diagonal support so um, let's have a look at the pennant pattern in action on a price chart so here's an example of the pennant pattern on the Australian Swiss franc uh, 60 minute pair now you have a high here and you have a low here and price is making steady lower highs but higher lows so you can see the triangle pattern formation and price is getting squeezed in between uh, the two uh, diagonal support and resistance levels until prices break out right here so this candle we can see is quite a negative uh, bearish candle and um, traders would have entered on the break of that candle there so if we were going for a short position traders would have entered here put their stop somewhere above any of these swings possibly above the actual pennant pattern itself and then gone for their uh, their their profit target which is somewhere down here. So that's an example of the pennant pattern breaking to the downside. The same would be said to the upside. Um, it's pretty much the same. You would wait for a candle close um, below or above that level in the case of the upside. And uh, again, traders would enter on the close of the breakout candle. So this uh, breakout pattern is what we would call the ascending and descending uh, triangle. So this is the ascending and this is the descending. So what you have is it's similar to a wedge pattern, but what you have is a horizontal uh, level of uh, resistance in an ascending triangle. Uh, triangle pattern and prices so prices are not making you know higher highs they're just literally bouncing off that horizontal level and then you will have basically higher lows being made until price gets squeezed into a level and then price will either break out from the horizontal level sorry about that uh, or it will break down so it'll either break that diagonal um, support level or it'll break the horizontal resistance level. So obviously prices are making higher lows, but we're not making higher highs. And it's the same thing with the descending triangle. So we're making, um, that would be maybe a high and that would be a lower high. 
and then this would be another lower high but price isn't making lower lows it's just bouncing off of this sorry about that it's just bouncing off of this these levels of support so again traders would either look for price to break to the downside so they break horizontal support or prices to break above the diagonal resistance zone so let's have a look at the ascending and descending triangles on a price chart here we have the euro australian dollar on the four hour chart the 240 minute chart and we have an ascending triangle so we have a level of resistance here you can see it's been touched a few times and we have higher lows being made so this would have been the high this would have been the low and we can see that prices are being squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and this is the this is a higher low right here um, until we get to this candle here so this very bullish candle would have been where traders would have entered again stop placed below or in a place where you think is safe and that swing there probably would have been the safest um, place for traders to uh, place their stop loss and then we can see that prices eventually continued making higher highs and higher lows so prices continue to uh, to go higher so again you can see where prices are making higher lows steadily but prices can't make or are not making um, higher highs so prices again are being squeezed through here and price will either break to the upside or to the downside so again if we were looking for a break to the downside what we were looking for is a bearish candle to break past the level of diagonal support this trend line here and the same principles apply as soon as the candle closes above that level you get a quite a bullish candle or a bearish candle in the case of if it was breaking past uh, diagonal support then you would enter or traders would enter on the candle close so in this example we have a descending triangle uh, breakout pattern on the Australian dollar Japanese yen 15 minute pair and we can see that price is being supported horizontally here so we've got a touch one two three of the level and then we have uh, lower highs being made so this would be the high and we have a lower high here and obviously we connect the uh, the lower highs and create this um, this uh, diagonal trend line to the downside now where traders would uh, enter would be on the break of the diagonal um, resistance level or if prices broke the horizontal support level but in this example we had prices uh, this candlestick here broke to the upside so traders would get long and put their stop loss around here or anywhere where they think that their stop loss would be safe and then go for the risk so like I said this one was um, a descending triangle that broke to the upside but descending triangles can also break to the downside and the same principles would apply where you would have probably a bearish candle would break past the um, the horizontal support level prices are being squeezed um, and then there should be some sort of breakout either to the upside or the downside so I hope you found the breakout uh, trading useful and um, informative and if you want to ask me any questions just uh, send me an email at info at trading180.com